Welcome to my YouTube channel, everybody. I am so excited to be here with you today. I want to talk to you about why you cannot heal the narcissist. This topic gets brought up to me all of the time, in particular when I'm talking with somebody who's just realizing that they're dealing with a narcissist is, what can I do? What can I say? How do I fix this problem? And long story short is that you can't. And I'm going to give you six reasons why you can't in this video. But the long story short is that you can't fix them because in the narcissist's mind, you're the problem. They don't have a problem. They are not the problem. The problem is you. The problem is that you're not going along with their plan. The problem is that you're not feeding their ego. The problem is that you're in some way, shape, or form against them, whether that's true or not. That is how the narcissist is interpreting the situation. So reason number one that you cannot heal the narcissist is because there's no ability for the narcissist to do a genuine self-reflection. They can't actually look at their own flaws, their own shortcomings. And by nature, it's very difficult for the narcissist to see their destructive behaviors as something that isn't to be celebrated because in a lot of ways, it has served them. Their destructive behaviors and their ability to manipulate other people around them has gotten them where they are. It has either gotten them the family that they have or it has gotten them the job that they have. It has in some way served them. And so it's difficult to say, hey, that thing that made you successful in this area is actually a really destructive behavior and you're damaging people around you. How would that make the narcissist want to change that behavior when it has produced the outcomes that they have been looking for? So that's number one. Number two is because there's a lack of empathy. They don't, there's a deficit in their ability to actually look at how their connection emotionally, physically, spiritually, et cetera, with other people is beneficial to them, how the, how the benefit of the other person is a benefit to them. So the act of connecting with their own emotions, the act of connecting with the emotions of people they have affected through their behavior is just simply not there. And this lack of empathy is ultimately going to hinder the narcissist's ability to engage in a healing journey because they can't connect with their own emotions and they also can't connect with the emotions of the people around them. The third reason is that they have an extreme resistance to change. Healing requires this commitment to change, to personal growth, to accountability, to the willingness to change or adapt your behavior to become healthier. And narcissists are entrenched in their own patterns of manipulation and control and ultimately addiction. As I've said before, the abuse that you are suffering today from a narcissist is going to be the least amount of abuse that you ever suffer until things change. Because, And by things changing, I mean you, until you stop tolerating abuse. Because like any other addiction, the level of that drug that the addict gets today is not going to be the level of the drug that the addict needs in a week, in a month, in a year, in 10 years. And so we need to look at this truly from another perspective other than just your own of, I feel I can heal them. I think I can do this. I want this outcome so badly that I'm willing to sacrifice anything and everything to get it. While those things are might be true and they're valid, it doesn't change the outcome because your will is not going to be stronger. It's not going to be able to overcome or overpower the narcissist's will and their need for the next supply. So without this genuine desire and commitment to change, the ability to adapt and adopt new healthier behaviors, the narcissist is not going to embark on this healing journey that's truly going to make a difference. Now, they might go along with you to therapy or to various things, especially when they know that they can manipulate the person in, in control. So if you are going to um, counseling through your church or counseling to a therapist, I highly, oh, I always recommend that you make sure they understand narcissism. This is like having cancer, but not, but going to your family medicine doctor. That, that is a doctor, that is a professional, but that doesn't mean that that person is equipped to handle your situation. And again, if you're going to go on a true and genuine healing journey, not just one where the narcissist is gaining 
the right words, the right tactics, and the right, you know, outward appearance to manipulate you deeper. If you're actually going on a true journey of change, uh, a true healing journey, it's important to recognize the narcissist's original position on this, that they, they cannot change in the way you want them to change. They will change. They will get better at being a manipulator, better at being a narcissist, but you can't force them to become a version that you want them to become. The fourth reason is that the narcissist truly cannot establish genuine connections. The, the process of developing an emotional attachment, an emotional connection, an authentic relationship is not there because the narcissist level of self-interest is so high and their ability to use manipulation without batting an eye at it makes it so that there's a lack of emotional reciprocity in any type of relationship that they get into. Genuine connections are are vital for true empathy, for true relational connection in this world, no matter what that is, whether that's in your family or at your job or whatever. But the narcissist challenges, the narcissist wars against those type of connections. And it it will inhibit them from building this crucial foundation. One of the things that you can do when you think you're dealing with a narcissist or you've just realized that somebody is a narcissist and you're kind of having this tug of war in your own mind of like, did I really see that? Is this really happening or am I making it up? Is a look at the establishment of the of other relationships that the narcissist has. The narcissist may very well have other connections in their life, but are they genuine or are they only based on what that person does for another person? So in other words, are these people true, genuine connections or are they flying monkeys? Are they supplies? Are they serving this system of narcissistic abuse and, and the system that the narcissist has established in their life to continue to abusing and to grow that influence that they have, that social influence. Because again, the narcissist chooses people specifically, strategically, in order to continue growing and gaining uh, uh, their influence and position. The fifth reason that you cannot change a narcissist is because there are deeply entrenched defense mechanisms that are going to be very hard for you to overcome without the narcissist's ability to let you in their fragile self-esteem their very fragile ego and the walls that they have particularly and specifically set up to avoid facing their own vulnerabilities are so high and so thick these these defense mechanisms like projection denial blame shifting, manipulating, right? These are barriers to introspection. They're, yes, they're keeping you out, but they're also keeping the narcissist out from meeting their true self. They are deeply hindering the narcissist's ability to engage in deep self-exploration. That's again, required. As I said, that's number, that's the number one reason. So breaking through these entrenched defense mechanisms when the narcissist does not want you to get in there is not only going to make your efforts null and void, it's actually going to increase the defensiveness that the narcissist has against you and against anybody else that you're trying to bring in there. So if you're trying to set up a, a meeting with a counselor, if you're trying to set up a meeting with you know a spiritual leader of some sort, the narcissist is now not only against you, but against that person or that structure as well because you are trying to do something that the narcissist is unwilling to let you do and they take that as a personal attack and the final reason is that there is a pattern of manipulation and control just like just like any other habit that we have you know if you get up in the morning and maybe you meditate maybe you do your stretches you brush your teeth you go to the gym whatever it is that you do automatically without even thinking about it you're just on autopilot right that's a habit. The same type of cycle is deeply ingrained when it comes to emotional manipulation, when it comes to control over other people. These habits are deeply ingrained. And without the, the conscious and, and committed pursuance of getting this changed, there is going to be 
a, a, you're not just fighting a spiritual battle at this point. You're also fighting against the the way that the 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 brain has been programmed, right? So you need to understand that genuine healing requires not just deliverance, which I absolutely believe in, and I think everybody should go find a deliverance minister that specializes in taking control over these types of spirits. And especially if you are trapped in a cycle of codependency, get inner healing, get deliverance. But you also need to recognize that your your body, your brain, your physical organ in your head has been wired a certain type of way. And the narcissist brain has been wired a certain type of way. They are uh, against relinquishing control. They they may be doing this on autopilot physically as well as spiritually being being manipulated and influenced. And so it again, it all comes down to you are the problem. They are not the problem. They're incapable of seeing the fact that their behavior is a problem. And again, their behavior has likely gotten them to where they are. They have had success in manipulating family members. They have had success manipulating you know, courtrooms or success manipulating board of their company or whatever, you know, you need to understand that the narcissist wouldn't do something that didn't get them their ultimate goal. And so again, when you see destructive behavior, that's not necessarily what the narcissist sees. And so when you come at it, like, Hey, this is really destructive and I need you to change to the narcissist. Why should they change? It's gotten them exactly what they wanted. So until you understand that this battle has very little to do with you and the quicker that you can understand your role in this battle is not to save that person you, you can't do anything that is going to make them change their mind you can't force your will upon that person then the sooner it is that you can start shifting your energy your you can start shifting your thoughts your emotions your willpower into something that is actually controllable. Your life is under your domain. And so the quicker that you can start shifting that energy and start shifting all of that, that thought power and all of that emotional power that you've been pouring into the narcissist and start establishing the foundation and the boundaries that you want to have for your own life, the quicker that you're going to start seeing a change in your life. The fastest way to do this is to get around a group of people who've already done that. And that's why I'm inviting you to join my Narcissistic Detox Intensive. To apply, it's super easy. You just send me a text to 512-677-9322 with the word detox, and let's see if you qualify to join. I will walk with you step-by-step -step through your healing process for a year. You'll have access to my 24-7 private community, as well as an online portal that has tons of guided meditation, support for your journey, help with your legal situation, as well as understanding how to explain and navigate this situation that you're dealing with with your children. Don't let this year be a repeat of last year. Start taking the things that you are watching on YouTube, that you are learning about on the internet, and putting them into practice in your life today. I've introduced a new playlist on my YouTube channel as well. It's called 300 Seconds. And in this playlist, I'm going to give you little five minute snippets of what it's like to do coaching with me, the topics that we discuss and the integrative healing that we undergo. Because my coaching is, is holistic in that it embraces your spirit, soul, and body. And so I want you to check out that playlist if you haven't seen any of these short clips already. And with that, I will see you in my next video.